Hey, is this a good time? I've, we've been playing tag here for three or four days, and uh, well, it's been a little hectic. That's the way the virus rolls. So, anyways, I was just thinking how this is going to affect, you know, the investor market, the rental market, the real estate market around here, and where the good buys are going to be. Uh, so, the the issue. The issue is going to be what is a good buy. I mean, that's going to be, you know, that's that's going to become the operative term. It's a good buy, right? Uh, that's you, you've heard me say for years, Chris, uh, Christian. The uh, and I appreciate you letting me record this telephone call. I'm, I've got a camera set up and I'm recording it uh, on my side, and I'll send you the video so you can be sure you like it before I post it on Facebook, uh, YouTube, or Facebook or whatever I do with it. But it's going to go to it's going to go on YouTube for sure. Uh, but the the issue that you've heard me talk about is how little I think of comparable values, right? Um, right. That whole thing about comps are dangerous and probably worthless for active investors. If there was ever a time that proved comps are worthless, this is it. Because whatever something was worth literally ten days ago, it's worth a different price today. And I'm. As, as I look at where pricing is going to go, uh, it's hard to determine when the buying opportunity is going to become available. But uh, in the last three or four days, we can say for sure it's not going to, there's not going to be any kind of turnaround realistically uh, until the um, middle of May, maybe the first of June. Right. It's going to have to kind of flush through the system. Well, so California shut down until April the 9th. So this is uh, the 22nd, um, yeah. Monday the 22nd. And there's, um, we know, so three more weeks, California is completely closed. Ohio is closing down. Illinois is closed. New York. So we're not closed down here. Uh, today, I think they issued the, the for all non-essential. Yeah, yeah, all non-essential businesses are closing tonight at midnight. But if you look at the list of businesses that are still going forward, uh, there's a lot of businesses that are going to be open. Yeah. I mean, um, it's it's for sure. Um, Home Depot and uh, hardware stores are going to stay open. Uh, everything, real estate offices and are considered uh, essential, and so there'll be real estate offices that people have to. Still buy and sell houses, and yeah. you know the transactions are going to need to work. Uh, so, it, the list of open businesses for uh, what would be considered um, a stay-at-home quarantine is still going to be a lot of businesses that are going to be open and operating. Right. So that gives it some flow, anyways, and people can get out. Yeah, uh, grocery stores for sure. So, but the but let's say. I mean, the simple math is the, I believe the U.S. economy does $14 trillion a year, gross domestic product, $14 trillion. Yeah. So, yeah. so if you look at this trillion-dollar stimulus package that uh, they still can't get through the Senate, you wind up with, you know, that's a $14 trillion a year, effectively, um, a trillion dollars every three weeks, $300 billion a week, $330 billion a week. So, but if the economy is only functioning at 40%, which I think by the end of this week, it'll be, it'll be lucky to be functioning at 40% by the end of this week. So, that, that, yeah, you we're losing 200 billion a week and Congress can't figure out how to get a stimulus package. I mean, that, you know, that's <laughs> 30 billion a day of the economy is being lost and, uh, Pelosi and the Democrats uh, can't get together with the Republicans to pass something. It's just insane. Yeah, I mean, it's free. Um, you almost think, it, hey, it's free money. It makes the government look loving, caring, and doing something, and right? I mean, yeah. the, the the squabbling over. I mean, it's it's like they're trying to rearrange the deck chairs on the Titanic in the great classic statement. They, this the ship is going down, and they better be looking for who's going to they're going to throw life jackets to. 
If they keep arguing over who's going to get life jackets, nobody's going to get in the damn lifeboats. And that's that's, right. that's where the problem is on, you know, what is a goodbye? I mean... Uh, I, I just told my... Here's a good example. 176,000 bought in 2016, right? And I, I was working for a buyer... And if you look, see what out, what's out there, there's hardly anything for a ranch condo in West Knoxville. And so we, he ended up paying $239,900. So that's a big jump. That's like a 50000 jump. Right. So. So the issue gets to... Three years, yeah. So, so, so the issue yeah. is... The whole thing about you know how much inventory is out there is it's all a function of demand, and so um, plus the, the ability to finance. And so we know there's going to be a lot of ability to finance everything going forward. I mean, when they come up with a vaccine a year from now, and it'll be a year from now, but when they come up with a vaccine, uh, it's going to be like the end of prohibition. I mean, people will be dancing in the streets. I mean, it'd be unbelievable. It's like the end of economic prohibition. Yeah. We need to shut down. Hey. Shut up in our houses. It's uh, because like, until then, they, you know, they're talking about the, this treatment with the malaria drug, and maybe that works out to be something that really does work and can treat the the virus if you do get it. Uh, but the, you know, that's still you know a couple of months away before that even gets to be whether that's tested enough to to know that it'll work. And there's enough medicine in the pipeline to fill the need that could be there. But at what point do people start going back into crowded restaurants? Uh, I mean, I, I th think you right. got you got to look. I think it's 21 days in a row something becomes uh, a habit. If you do something 21 days in a row, it becomes right. a habit. And you do it for 90 days and it becomes ingrained in the way you uh, begin to function. And so this is going to go on for 90 days, almost with certainty. And right, if, just because of the carryover effects. Yeah. For sure. So let's think through uh, how this is going to change. So right now there's all kinds of people wanting to live in downtown Knoxville, right? Uh, every, every urban city, to make a difference where they are. If they've got jobs that are being created, they've rebuilt their cities into this walkable community where uh, people are forced to meet and talk to their neighbors. Right. Yeah, how, how's that going to work out? Yeah, I mean, really, truly, you're being told, don't talk to your neighbors, stay away from your neighbors, cor practice correct social distancing. So how does that whole urban concept work in these kind of conditions? So I, I think you're going to see a real slowing of demand for all these properties that are being built in these urban cores. The urban, yeah. Interesting. I, I, right. I mean, I, I, I mean, would you, I mean, think about getting, I mean, we don't have the problem in, we have so few buildings that you have to get on an elevator to go up into to get to your apartment. But think of the big cities, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, Oh, man. I mean, uh, getting on and off to walk your dog and doing just all the normal things that, that, that seem to be kind of quirky, um, meeting your neighbors in the elevator and talking about what's going on. Well, I mean, you know, that's not going to happen. It's over. I mean, it's, it's going to be, I think it's over for a while. I mean, I don't think it's going to be something that even when the economy comes back booming, it's not going to boom for those kind of markets. No, it'll take just a long time to turn it around. But you're right, elevators, they might forget the use of elevators. Uh, I mean... I'm joking, but uh, hey, uh, it there, could get stripped. That's the perfect place to restrict though. I mean, so uh, so you get, you, you're going up and down the stairwells. Think about how many people are going to get hurt going up and down stairwells uh, because they're not holding on to the handrails. I know, it's a multiplier exponential effect. This is my. Let me ask how the lenders are going to handle it. I mean, are the lenders going to shut down? Are they going to 
shy away for new, less risky loans, ones that don't fit their exact criteria. You know, there'll be less flexibility because we don't. They don't know if the so, person that's borrowing the money is is going to even have a job. You know, say they're. So there's there. There'll never be. Uh, I've used this two or three times, Christian. Uh, there will. The people who grew up during the Great Depression, uh, right. and that who were in their 30s, uh, early 40s, late 20s to mid 40s, during the Depression, they never had enough cash the rest of their lives. And the people who were lenders then never loaned any money again that didn't have ironclad guarantees somewhere that could withstand a two or three year depression. So the Fed, I mean, that, our housing program came from putting people to work with guaranteed loans. So if the government will continue to guarantee debt to the banks, the banks will make loans. But the moment the government, you can't meet the government's criteria for what is a uh, a guaranteed loan, the, those loans will stop. Uh, yeah, so, so the so, buyers will fall. That's it. And so you wind up with a situation where, as I made the, as I really believe, the, you know, I mean, you can look at yourself as you're battle scarred, you've been in the business forever, you, you are extremely successful. Uh, and I appreciate you wanting to brainstorm with me about what's going to happen. The, but the reality is, how many more risky projects will you take on? Not a, don't, let's don't worry about the banks. Let's worry about you bringing equity to the table to do a deal. Uh, you wind up where, let's say, last year you did 10 deals. Five of them were locked up. You were really happy with the deal. You thought they had zero or little risk, and they had a reasonable rate of return. You had three deals that were a little marginal. Uh, but they but they still looked good and they still wanted to do them. But you took a flyer on two deals. One, you took a, a small flyer, you looked a little bit out of what you normally do, but it wasn't a lot of money you were putting at risk, but some. And then the other, the last deal, it was a complete flyer. You, you put a few thousand at the deal or whatever the number was, and you said, if I lose it, I lose it, but if it wins, it'll be okay. Well, hell, how many of those deals are you going to do going forward? I mean, how many deals will very, you... Very few. It would have to be... Yeah. Yeah, more solid. Sir. I mean, so you're not going to take a flyer. Um, and, you know, <laughs> I'm as game as a rubber ball. And uh, I don't know whether I'll take on some of the risk. Uh, w once I decide that the, the market's begun to turn off, I'm sure I'll start to play again. But I'm completely stopped right now. Uh, yeah. trying, trying to figure out how who's going to be able to pay rent uh, in the month that's of May. The side, that's the other side of the coin because I was going to say we both are landlords, and then you know California has said no evictions for ninety days. Well, who in their right mind wants to evict somebody because the government shut their job down? I mean, I'm when when I mean, Kelvin just well, sent out a letter. They're already six months behind. That's so. so the, yeah. So, I mean, so to that point exactly, if, 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 you, if you've been a landlord and you've got a tenant that has already been behind and you haven't sent them a stop and a pay or quit letter, um, yeah. and you haven't been following up with your paperwork, you're going to own that tenant because they're not going to move and there's no way to evict somebody. But we've got, so we've got 40, let's say, just pick a number. Of 40 tenants that we have that are really solid, never missed a payment, really good people. We, 30 of them for sure are going to be unemployed by the end of this week. That's not any fault of theirs. I mean, they, you know, rent's always on time. They're always, they're, they're, if there's a problem, they let us know. We fix things. They call us and say they fix this. And I mean, so everything's been good on the with the tenants. Everything's been good with the properties. And now they're going to be unemployed and there's no telling what's going to happen and I'm just using just a simple example if you've got 40 good tenants 30 of them are going to be unemployed by the end of this week yeah. so that's a, that's a hard reaction but how about this what what are the, so what's 
so the bank stopped paying us, and then is the bank going to give us, you know, three months free or, <laughs> you know, let us ride or whatever? Well, so I've been um, refinancing with, uh, 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 out into the secondary market, yeah. and I'm not sure what those lenders are going to be able to do. You know, they're securitizing the transactions. So if they don't start getting, if they don't get the rent collecting, do they have any option but to foreclose? The local banks, uh, the small banks, they may work with you, the, uh, but the, you know, it's good for Bank of America and uh, all these super regional banks to talk about what they're not going to do and not going to foreclose. But I don't have a lot of confidence in what big banks say they're going to do and what they do do, what they do do at the end of the day. Uh, uh, they're, they, they may have really good intentions, but the bottom line is they, uh, they're really slow to support the people that need the help to make the economy run. So, That's not capitalism. Banks are built on capitalism. Uh, and you know, the, that, the whole thing about capitalism and I'm, you and I are the perfect example of how capitalism makes people that are just average people successful. <laughs> It'd be hard to be more average than we are, and uh, we've been fortunate in life, but uh, been very blessed. We've been very blessed, Christian. But the but the thought now is, um, I mean, we're 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 putting everybody on point that we're collecting rent. We are sending letters out to all the tenants, uh, wanting to be sure that we are aware of who's in each house. <laughs> this is no time for. Um, people to be moving people into their house if they are needing yeah. to move somebody into their house if they need you know if if they've got a parent who's living away and they need to move their parent into the, into their house so that they can take care of them we need to know that right it's, we don't want them to not do that but we need to know um, what's going on we want people to be able to take care of themselves and, and we want to work with all of the tenants but I deal with the reality that when people that are going to get this thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars or whatever it's going to be that's not going to come to us as rent it's not going to go to mortgage payments i mean i don't i don't see it they're not going to send us a thousand dollars no unless i don't know but i don't even know i hardly know who to send it to because <laughs> i think the yeah they're still trying to sort all that out uh but if they don't get a bill passed pretty soon it won't make any difference uh, I mean, let's go back to the 30 billion a day that the economy is losing. Yeah. Uh, so you, they, they finally get, agree to something. They get it passed at the end of this week. We're two weeks behind, 400 billion behind. We're going to be 200 billion behind next week and the week after that. So we're a trillion dollars behind before we get to the issuance of the first round of the money. And then when we get to the first round of the money, um, that money will start coming out. It won't come out all in one day, right? So by the time we get it out, it'll be like it never existed. And uh, so in California, in most states, you, you're not, you're not going to be able to, utilities will not be allowed to turn off people's utilities for non-payment. Um, we're not going to evict anybody. I, I can say clearly we're not going to, and I, and I don't believe any landlord will yeah, evict no. some. I mean, you're not going to, are you? No. No, of course not. No, I mean, you know, we want to, I mean. hope they get a job and hope the government comes through the center of you all. I'll talk to my bank, possibly. Uh, I, I would, did mention something when I met with them. They would let me go interest only for six months. So, I mean, I think uh, there's going to be all kinds of arrangements that are going to be interest only, but the bottom line is you still got to have the interest money coming in. As we look at how we're going to evaluate the business of providing housing, if we start stepping away, if private investors start stepping away from um, the construction of new homes right. and the ownership of rental property, the movement of homes and neighborhoods, it's, it is going to it will, there will be no housing. I mean, it, the people don't understand that 40, 
percent of all the housing in America is provided by people who do 50 or fewer, they own 50 or fewer rental properties. I think this is still correct. I, but I think this is a Google, Googleable, Googleable, Googleable fact. You could Google. Um, but uh, of all the rental properties in the United States, and right now, uh, about 38% of the entire population lives in a rental property of some kind. Right. Of the entire rental population in the United States, 70% of all rental property is owned by people who own 50 units or less. Yeah. So, yeah, so, I mean, people like, uh, like us, right? So, okay. uh, we, that, so if we start stepping away and all the investors like us start stepping away, the government does, does they just do not have enough ability of money or time to solve the problems. I mean, so, there's got to be some. There's got to be some method that's going to be put in place to make it possible for the small, uh, the, the investor to survive. Exactly, it's almost like coming around in a circle. You know, everyone has to get supported somewhere, directly, indirectly, to to get through the, this incredible loss we're going to, you know, economic loss we're going to go through. Well, I mean, um, let me go back to that comment about the depression. If if you've got a million dollars in cash right now, you absolutely are not spending any of it because you don't know whether you've got enough to survive yourself. Um, you, you might be able to put that money in some safe investment that's going to get a rate of return that you feel good about owning, but you're not going to take any risk with that money. You're just not going to. And so if you've got $20 million dollars, and you've been able to amass $20 million in capital, you've already sacrificed, you've already done things, you've taken enormous risk at some time, and you've accumulated those assets, but now you're at a different stage and a different time. Most everybody you know is getting cash calls on their stock portfolios, so you're not going to be spending any cash. You're not going to be taking any risk. Again, you're going to be somebody that's going to take a safe investment. The only group of people really left are the people who've accumulated significant cash deposits. And I mean, you know, those people who can stroke a check for 15 or 20 million dollars, not just have 15 or 20 million dollars. So you really get down to a very small group of people in the United States who will be able to take risk. Who will want to take risk? Let me rephrase that. Um, I sound awful negative today, don't I? Well, there's some, we're, in, we're in a gray area, so to speak. And it's, it is kind of like dominoes. If, if it, government and people in general can support each other through it, it the, chain, the chain won't break. Uh, but it has, you know, everybody's got to pitch in, I think. We're, yeah, we, we, we want to, the people that we're running to right now, we want them to feel comfortable about the fact that we're not going to do anything that's going to cause them a problem. Uh, we, we want to know if they're moving people into their house so that they can watch over them and take care of them. But at the same time, we need to know who's in all the properties, right? Um, so if, if somebody needs help, we know how to get them help, right? Um, the, and in some, in your, I guess in your situation, it's the same. The, you're the most regular financial contact that a lot of people that you rent to have. That's right, yeah. uh, I mean, they've got a limited banking relationship. They've got, um, you know, they've got a banking relationship. But, but in general, on a month to, month in month out basis, they speak with you if they got a problem. They speak, you know, they call with me. They they call uh, Kelvin, my property manager. They talk with him. So we're, we're trying to be focused on making sure people are comfortable because we, it's just exactly as you said, we are in this together. And if we don't figure it out together, it will absolutely, who gets to celebrate in the streets when this thing is over, it's going to be a sm much smaller number of people. Well, I, I get to warn you 
call up. But right. I was just thinking, I mean, if you could sum it up, there's going to be fewer buyers. Are there going to be fewer buyers? I say yes. So, so are, the, are the prices going to go down? I, 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 I think if you have, yes, there will be fewer buyers. Say there are forces put, pushing them down because of, you know, lending strictures, but there's still demand that's out there for people that are so I, I think you're 30 I think you're 30 days away from really seeing um, an idea as to how long it's going to last so I think 30 days from now the end of April the middle of April the end of April and you use that target April 19th date that uh, they've got with uh, in California if, I mean that kind of time frame will give everybody an idea as to how much longer it's going to go on uh, and so for I think prices are going to go so down. Prices won't, yeah, start coming down for another 30 to 60 days. I, I, so I think 30 days from now, you get a pretty good idea of where things are. I think uh, that by the time we begin to get a feel for where things are, the only real buy, there's nobody moving. There's, I mean, there's not going to be anybody moving in 30 days. Uh, that whole thing about corporations requiring people to move, that's not going to happen. So, I mean, who are going to be the buyers 30 days from now? Investors. I mean, there will be some people that buy homes. There's no question about that. Yeah, moving up or moving down. They, you know, they've been wanting to buy a, um, a bigger house and people get nervous about cleaning their big house and they've got, you know, they don't, they don't want to live there anymore. And so you can see those things moving. You can see all the, Airbnb, all the Airbnbs are going to be for sale. I mean, there's no, there are, there are very few people that can withstand that have got Airbnbs can withstand uh, 60 days, 30 days of no income at all. Right. I was going to call Peyton, you know, uh, from Knox Rio. Right, right. Because uh, that's what his focus is referring to, the RBO. And he's, and he is great at it, right? And he's done unbelievably well. But the bottom line is nobody's renting uh, Airbnbs today. And they're not going to be a custom one for you know, bought a lot and building oh a, cu a custom ERBO like hey. place. Well, there's whole hotels being built around the country. Those are all stopped. So, uh, le well, less lower pricing, uh, less demand because the fear factor is going to continue. We don't know where the pricing is going to settle out. There'll be plenty of financing from the federal government for construction projects. No question, if you can build something, there'll be money available to build it. There'll be government guarantees on new construction. No question about it. Uh, whether there'll be government guarantees on remodeling money, I don't know about that. Right. But... Uh, it, gets, it gets things moving, you know, from nails to people to gas. So where, where, will, where will the bottom... You know, I'm, I'm looking to get a feel for where so I've got uh, contracts uh, now on a property uh, that I've that I've liked I've wanted to buy um, we had some foundation issues that delayed the closing we've gotten a study back on the engineering we've got a hard number on that the sellers have agreed to reduce the price because we have you know real paperwork that says we deserve a reduction of price so I believe it's a, a, a buying opportunity to buy this house but I don't want to close. I'm, I'm really hesitant to close. Well, get an extension for 30 days. That, that's exactly where we are. I've, I've said, you know, with, what, with what's going on in the world, I need to, I don't, because if I buy it, I got to find a tenant to put in it. And I don't know where the tenant's going to come. Normally, I would say I, I, I could rent it in 48 hours, but. People are, are shutting down. They're staying where they're at. That's it. So I don't know that I can find a tenant. So I'm hesitant. These times are going to be interesting, certainly. So, that's, so let's keep in touch. Uh, hey, listen, I, I really appreciate you calling, and I'll uh, send you a copy of the video, and you can uh, tell me what you think yeah. about it. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. Sure. Christian, thank, hey, thanks so much, man. Right. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay with you.